soul is tormented by a succubus Call assist, pants who dripping from the way I spit Fell in love First thing I gotta say before I even start talking about the top 5 best hentai on Netflix, I just gotta say wow, you guys can warm my heart sometimes. It was, hold on, let me count real quick, 1, 2, wait, wait, 2 weeks since I thanked you guys for hitting a milestone on my channel and that was 50,000 subscribers and now I'm at over 60,000 subscribers. The love is real, hopefully soon I can see that silver play button sparkling in my hands. I. I, I think, I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> But anyway, for real guys, it really does mean a lot to have people who care about what I create. I always try to talk about things that other people on YouTube don't bring attention to, even if that means some people saying, Oh my gosh, this is so fake because no one else is talking about it. No one else. You're a faker. I, I don't know. That <laughs> That's what people say. But today's video, I guess, is not that original since it's a top five video. But hey, it's my top five with my opinions. I'm sure people aren't going to agree, but let's get started. Now, this video is, of course, about my personal opinion on what anime I enjoyed the most and is about Netflix original or exclusive anime. So even though Hunter x Hunter, aka Hunter x Hunter, is the best anime on Netflix right now, it isn't on the list because it isn't a Netflix property. And this isn't my my top five anime of all time it's just my top five anime from netflix get it okay number five is Sirius the jaeger i actually rewatched some of this anime to get ready to talk about it in this video and it made me want to rewatch the whole thing but i didn't do that for the reason of actually having time to make this video but this anime has just a hint of attack on titan and a hint of demon slayer is it as good as either of those no those anime are way better but once you get to episode three you'll see what i mean when it comes to the story but this anime is one of those anime Anime where I just found myself liking every character. You know when there's at least one character that you kind of hate the writer for creating? Yeah, this anime doesn't have that. At least for me. I don't want to spoil the actual story for it, but it involves a teenage boy by the name of Yuli. He is of the bloodline called Sirius. These people in history were really the only clan of people to be able to challenge the other species of people who want to be known as the most powerful species, and that species is vampires. Yes, vampires. But no, this isn't some sucky Twilight show. The vampires in this are freaking awesome, and Yuli gets taken under the wing of a man when he is a child who raises him to be a Jaeger. What's a Jaeger? People who track down and murder vampires. And Yuli develops such a hatred that he vows to kill every last one. The animation on the environment of the show is really freaking amazing, and I love it. If I told you any more reasons why it's so good, I would have to spoil it. <laughs> it's only one season long right now, so it shouldn't be that intimidating to get into. Number four is Magi. This is probably one of the most underrated series ever in anime. And I'm sure anyone else who has watched the whole thing would say the same. And if you're a manga reader, boy, you must be furious. But I'll get into that in a moment. The world of this show is so interesting and every protagonist is very likable. Yeah, I said protagonists. There are two for the anime right now. Basically, dungeons are brought to the world with a power called the Ruch. It's kind of hard to explain, but think of it like the force from Star Wars, just not exactly the same, but close enough. The Ruch also brings to the world godly beings called Magi. These people can use the Ruch to produce Magoi. Think of that like Chakra in Naruto. They can use it to make all kinds of magical abilities. A Magi chooses someone to be a king and send them into a dungeon where they go through a bunch of fighting and puzzles and ultimately end up with a giant blue god who will enter a metal vessel that you own so you can have their power. This can be literally anything from a sword to a metal lamp. There's honestly just so much more to this show. If you like seven deadly sins, trust me, you will like this show. The series, instead of being put together as seasons, Netflix has the parts of the anime separate. So if you're confused, the labyrinth of magic is part one. The kingdom of magic is part two. Those both follow the protagonist Alibaba, which is one of my favorite freaking characters 
Wars. The third part is actually a prequel, so you could even watch it first if you want. I actually watched it first not knowing it came out after. That part is called The Adventure of Sinbad, who in the other parts is actually an adult, but for this, he is a kid and a teenager in some parts. Now, I want to put the Magi series higher on this list, but I just can't. Why can't I? Well, because this anime is a complicated one. You see, the story of Alibaba hasn't been fully adapted into the anime, even though they decided to release the adventure of Sinbad. And even though that takes place before the other parts, the story of Sinbad hasn't even been fully adapted either. And that's my main problem. They're taking forever to get out more parts for the anime, but I still highly recommend you check it out. At number three, we've got Sword Guy. Man, Sword Guy. I really like this freaking anime. Sword Guy is one of those anime where you really feel like you're watching an anime, and that might sound confusing, but what I'm saying is it gives off that tone that Western animation doesn't really do. But in the anime, there are what they call cursed weaponry, and what that basically means is there are weapons possessed by demons. Shout out to Asa, Sword from Black Clover. But in Sword Guy, these weapons allow you to transform into something called a Busoma, which kind of looks like a mech, but it's not. The thing is, the demon inside your weapon is really going to want you to kill people and is going to make you become insanely bloodthirsty and eventually the demon will just take over your body. But there's a company called the Shoshidai who allow you to slow down that process so you have more time in your life before you get possessed. The catch is you basically become a mercenary for them and also in order to slow down the process they put you to sleep in a de-aging liquid and they might even keep you asleep for decades so you'll come back home and see your friends as old people. Trust me guys this show is awesome and just know yes Guy is probably the best character but once you meet the character Sheen no he will eventually arguably the best character too. Number two is the seven deadly sins. Yes I know there are going to be so many people who say what in the bloody hell are you talking about mate that anime is the best anime to ever exist in the history of anime that exists in existence mate what are you saying what are you saying bruv what, what are you saying but it's number two guys which is still pretty high i cover this series a lot on the channel but for those who don't know seven deadly sins follows characters who are meant to embody a trait from each of the seven deadly sins of christianity the main character is the sin of wrath who goes by the name meliotis even though he's the sin of wrath you'll see him as a happy friendly character most of the time but if you get him mad he can probably kill you along with the entire planet meliotis is insanely powerful and has the ability of full counter which can deflect any magical ability thrown at him. Oh, did I forget to mention? People fight with magic in this show. The main conflict in the series is the holy war against the demon clan, which holds a giant significance with one of the seven deadly sins, but let's not spoil that. There are only three seasons of the anime on Netflix and a movie, but season two is actually just a set of OVAs, and the fourth season will be releasing August 6th. I'm sure everyone watching this has already seen the show, but if you haven't, go check it out. Now before I get to number one, I would like to give some honorable mentions. Dorohe Doro is a pretty hyped anime, but I wouldn't say it's in the top five, although I would say it's worth mentioning. The animation is done very well by Studio Mappa, who has actually animated God of High School and will be doing the final season of Attack on Titan, and there's some violent gore I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna like. Now another anime is Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, The Battle of Unato. Now this is actually the sequel to Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, which is an Amazon exclusive. I'm unsure why Netflix has the sequel and not the original, but the series is just amazing. Literally amazing. If it actually had multiple seasons, it would most likely be in my top five anime of all time. It's that good. But unfortunately, it pretty much died being an Amazon exclusive. It's an original anime not based on any manga made by Wit Studio who created the Attack on Titan anime who unfortunately won't be making the next season of Attack on Titan. But speaking of that, in the first episode of Cabinary in the Iron Fortress, you will see a lot of things familiar from Attack on Titan, but trust me, the story is much different. Please, 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 please go watch that show. Instead of a second season, it got this three episode sequel exclusive to Netflix, but it's still worth checking out. Trust me, it's awesome. I can't stress that enough. 
All right, number one is Ajin Demihuman. The first thing you'll notice is that it's fully done in 3D animation, and only losers let that stop them from watching such a good anime. Basically, what an Ajin is is a person who literally cannot die, and there's no way of knowing who is an Ajin or even if you are an Ajin until you get put in a situation where you should die. Like, let's say getting hit by a truck. Now, if you just watch the trailer, you will see the main character is an Ajin, and he's basically being hunted down and in one scene tortured. Ajins have multiple powers like paralyzing people when they scream and creating a black ghost. This is a being that represents your personality but only you and other Ajin can see. And many have different powers, think stands from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure but not exactly the same. It only has 26 episodes but the most annoying part of the show is that it has an ending. The story literally ends and we feel comfortable with it ending there but then there's a bonus scene that makes us think there's going to be another season and there just isn't one. It is so annoying and it's been that way since 2016. But without that, the show has a beginning, middle, and end and is my personal favorite Netflix anime. If you guys want me to do more top 5s or even top 10 videos, just let me know down below. If this video does good, we most likely will see more. These videos do take a lot more time to make than the usual videos on the channel, so of course the support for them is greatly needed. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video and I would appreciate it if you left a like before you go. My name's Konjic and I'll talk to you in the next video.